Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art. I am going to read more of our book, Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution, by Arthur Tamplin and John Goffman. And uh, we are on page 173. And this is my second go at it, so I had read a page and decided it was yicky. So I deleted it, and I'm going to try it again and make an effort to read better. So we are now on page 173 in Chapter 8. Undisposable Radioactive Waste. The subtitle that we're starting on is Fuel Reprocessing Plants and Waste, quote, Disposal, unquote. Fuel reprocessing, fuel reprocessing plants take the spent fuel rods from reactors and reclaim the fissionable material. The AEC has several fuel reprocessing and waste storage and disposal sites that we shall discuss subsequently. At the present time, there is only one private fuel reprocessing plant, the Nuclear Fuel Services Plant in West Valley, New York. And I looked that up, and it's actually right now in Tennessee. Interesting. I wondered how it got there. This plant is regulated by the same set of regulations that applies to the reactors. As we indicated in the chapter on nuclear reactors, these regulations are a travesty on the public health. Moreover, we indicated in that chapter that an individual would be exposed to the guideline dosage if he ate only one pound of fish per week from Cataragus River, into which the West Valley plant's wastes are released. Cataragus is C-A-T-T-A-R-A-U-G-U-S, Cataragus. It would be sweet if somebody would look up to see what the oncology rates are, what the rates for cancer are there. As U.S. Health Education and Welfare Department publication, a U.S. Health Education and Welfare Department publication discusses the plant. In it, we find that, quote, suckers are taken from Cataragus Creek for food, especially in the summertime. In addition, there may, there may be a practice of grinding the flesh and bone for fish burgers. Right out of that creek with the nuclear fuel contamination. So, be curious about those cancer rates. Nuclear Fuel Services is also licensed by the AEC for waste disposal, quote unquote disposal. As a result, the company has a burial site on the West Valley compound. The same publication shows that 10 to 15 percent of the radioactivity in the creek is coming from this so-called burial site. Wow. New subtitle, even low discharge rates can contaminate water. Exactly. Just like the fucking Pacific Ocean, you dumb fuck scientists. Stupid fuckers. Okay, sorry about that, you guys. The Nuclear Fuel Services operation gives us very little reason to become complacent about the nuclear industry. Let me read that once more. The Nuclear Fuel Services operation gives us little reason to become complacent about the nuclear industry. Complacent. Look that word up if you're not 100% sure of it. C-O-M-P-L-A-C-E-N-T. Very important word in today's time. Complacent. Even if the reactors maintain low discharge rates, the West Valley story indicates that these fuel reprocessing plants and waste burial sites may well bring our groundwater and rivers to the limit of the regulations. We can take little solace from the AEC on this point. Their 1969 publication, The Nuclear Industry, states, quote, Intermediate level liquid waste is a term applicable only to radioactive liquids in a processing status, which must eventually be treated to produce a low level liquid waste, which can be released, and a high level waste concentrate, which must be isolated from the biosphere. Low-level liquid wastes are defined as those wastes which, after suitable treatment, 
can be discharged to the biosphere without exposing people to concentrations in excess of those permiss permitted by the AEC regulations. Waste generated in the coal cold or pre-irradiation phase of the fuel cycle from the mine to the reactor, as well as waste resulting from research laboratories and from medical and industrial applications of radioisotopes are generally, are generally considered as low or low hazard potential waste." Unquote. Considering the AEC regulations, Low hazard potential really means fools, fools rush in where wise men fear to tread. That's, <laughs> don't you love this guy the way he writes? He's funny. <coughs> Let me read that again. Considering the AEC regulations, low hazard potential really means fools rush in where wise men fear to tread. The West Valley plant indicates that commercial operations represent a serious hazard. The National Academy of Sciences National Research Council indicates that the AEC operations are not much better. Subsequent to the Minnesota Symposium in October of 1969, quote, nuclear power and the public, unquote, by Dr. Harry Foreman, the program chair, refused to allow Dr. M. King Hubert to insert the following into his text. Quote, Hubert, quote, industrial energy resources, unquote. Now this is from his paper. This is what was refused to allow Dr. Harry Foreman, the chairman of the symposium called Nuclear Power and the Public, refused to allow Dr. M. King Hubert, H-U-B-B-E-R-T, to insert the following text, and I quote, In view of the public concern over the question of environmental contamination by atomic waste from re nuclear reactors manifested at this meeting, it is pertinent to state that during 1965, at the request of the Atomic Energy Commission, the Committee on Geological Res Aspects of Radioactive Waste Disposal of the Division of Earth Sciences. Wow, that's a long name. Committee on Geological Aspects of Radioactive Waste Disposal of the Division of Earth Sciences, National Academy of Sciences, National Research Council, made a final review of the atomic disposal practices at the following establishments of the Atomic Energy Commission. Number one, Savannah River Laboratory, South Carolina. Number two, Oak Ridge National Laboratory, Oak Ridge, Tennessee. I bet you that's where that fuel processing plant is near. Number three, Cary Salt Mines, Cary Salt Company Mines, Hutchinson and Lyons, Kansas, to witness storage of high-level waste in accordance with the same committee's earlier recommendations. Number four, National Reactor Test Station, Arco, Idaho. Number five, Hanford Atomic Products Operations on the Columbia River in Washington. The report of this committee, dated May 1966 and comprising 92 pages, was submitted to the Atomic Energy Commission. Notwithstanding the fact that all early reports of this committee had been released to the public, and despite repeated requests from two successive chairmen of the Earth Sciences Division, release of this report by the Atomic Energy Commission has been persistently refused. This represents a particular instance. One of my personal acquaintances of the AEC practice, described so effectively by Dr. Harold P. Green in his paper before this symposium of withholding from the public or, quote, sweeping under the carpet, unquote, information that is unfavorable to the, quote, cosmetizing, unquote, treatment to the most, a, to most, treatment to which most AEC documents are subjected. Wow. I'm sorry. 
information that is unfavorable to the cosmetizing treatment to which most AEC documents are subjected. While only the Atomic Energy Commission has the authority to release this report, it appears that the time has come when a concerned public, as well as Chairman E. Moss of the Government Operations Subcommittee on Government Information, should at least be aware of its existence." Unquote. Now that never went into the symposium. It never went into it. Can you believe that? Okay. Dr. Earl F. Cook is Associate Dean Geosciences, College of Geosciences, Texas A&M University. Dr. Earl Cook reported further revealing information. Unquote. I mean, quote. I have had some experience with the, quote, patriarchal interests in atomic energy, unquote. I was staff officer for the National Academy of Science Committee on the Geological Aspects of Radioactive Waste Disposal, whose report to the AEC on storage and disposal policy and practice at the main AEC West waste producing installations was never released by the commission. Despite repeated attempts by the Academy's Division on Earth Sciences to have the report made public. Wow. So they just refused. They said, fuck you, just like they're doing right now to our same Congress. They're doing the same thing. The committee was discharged and a new one with no overlap of membership was appointed. Informal inquiry of the AEC's Idaho Falls office about the committee's report by one of my Idaho newspaper friends brought the reply that the report contained, quote, serious scientific errors, unquote, which would embarrass the committee members were it to be made public. In other words, the AEC is protecting not in self, but the committee in refusing to the, to release the report. Does that sound familiar? Unquote. That's, this is exactly what, what's his name? Earl F. Cook. Wow. Back to Goffman and Tamplin. We were appalled to learn that not only was the AEC able to silence the National, the National Academy, but it appears that it was even able to manipulate its committees. In response to pressure from, the, from Senators Church and Muskie, the AEC has finally released this report. As you might imagine, it is critical of the AEC's waste storage and disposal practices. The committee report contained two important conclusions. One, none of the existing AEC disposal, disposal installations are in a satisfactory geological location. And two, present practices of disposing of intermediate and low-level liquid in all manner of waste directly into the ground would in the long run lead to serious fouling of man's environment. Thank you, fucking Bechtel. This was written in 1970. They started dumping up in the Northwest, I think in the late 90s, those motherfuckers. Back to Tamplin and Goffman. Sorry for the peanut gallery comments. The 1969 report, The Nuclear Industry, quoted above, indicates, I'm sorry, I'll start that again. The 1969 report, The Nuclear Industry, quoted above, indicates that the AEC has not heeded the advice of the committee. The Nuclear Fuel Services Plan indicates that the time for taking the committee's recommendations seriously has already passed. We have no adequate means of containing these low and intermediate level radioactive wastes, and the proliferation of nuclear reactors is only going to compound an already serious problem. Wow. That's the end of Chapter 8, you guys. We're on page uh, 177. We're going to start number 9. Plutonium, public health and technological arrogance. And these fuckers are not even willing to admit 
right now that we, you know, we do have plutonium floating around in the, in the ocean. And it's going, it's, you know, from everything that I understand, it's heavy, so it falls. The plutonium falls. So that means it's going into the deep waters, into the deep earth, into the deep. It's fucking infecting it from the fucking bottom up. Well, I'm going to keep trying to think of different ideas to do with the time that I have available. And if anybody wants to join me, I think I'm, we're getting close to the end. I do want to read a book. If anybody has suggestions, please put them in the comments. And I'm actually beginning to, I'll throw this out because I know many of the people that watch this are females. But I think we need to do like a feminine thing of older women. Like we need to just, I don't know. It's legal to go topless here in Oregon. I got no problem holding up a sign completely half naked. I wouldn't even mind being whole naked, to be honest, but that's illegal. <laughs> I can stand in Oregon with half a sign and half half naked. And I don't know. We need to do something to wake these motherfuckers up. And I think a whole bunch of older women with their shirts off might be a good idea. Not just the young women. Like, what do we really look like? And just hold it up. And the men could join in with us, too. We could have just a bunch of people topless. The go topless thing is like just, you know... I don't know, it might shock someone. It's just an idea. I'm throwing it out there. I'm trying to figure out something that we can do that will shock the fuck out of people other than watching all of our children die. So put your courage feet on, you guys. Our thinking caps. Let's come up with something. And uh, suggestions on the book is a good idea. Otherwise, you're going to have to deal with what I want to read. <laughs> Ciao. Put your courage feet on.